the loud end of the Ruger American Hunter in the Magpul Hunter stock. Oh yeah, that is definitely up my street. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and I ain't gonna lie, I do like the Ruger Americans. I find the the actions of them just so, so smooth for not exactly a high-end rifle. And I say that in a nice way. You know, they're not massively expensive, but they they just feel good. They do feel good. I ain't, you know, in my experience, they feel good. I mean, I have got, and you've seen this on the channel, the little blackout American Ranch blackout that thing is silky smooth the bolt once it's got a bit of lubrication let's take the mag out that'll make life easier it's just silky smooth oh yeah love that i mean that's how slick it is probably got too much oil on there i do like to run my bolts wet who were misses <laughs> but yeah love that thing that is my own gun, so absolutely love it. But no, the American, Ruger American Hunter, when I can get it all out. Not a bad rifle. This one is in 6.5 Creedmoor. Yes, I know it's got a bit of a big scope on, but I'm just running, I'm doing sort of, I'm evaluating and testing the Arcan Optics uh, SH4 Gen 2 at the minute. Love that scope. Uh, really cool. Although, I ain't going to lie, it did, I know I'm waffling on, but I've just got to tell you, it did let me down a little bit. This turret has let me down. It's sort of slipping. So I don't know what's gone on there, but I managed to get it zeroed uh, for this test. And then all of a sudden, when I was just uh, making a little bit of an adjustment for uh, windage, uh, it just didn't feel right and it's like the top it's slipping so I've got to look into that I'll keep you posted on that when I do the full review of those uh, or that scope I have got two of them actually that I'm running on rifles but anyway I I digress let's talk about this rifle then so I'll throw out some specs it is in a grey Magpul Hunter stock which does look so cool it takes P mags. Uh, if I can get one out. So it does take P mags, which are pretty indestructible. Uh, decent magazines, I do love them. I've run them, those magazines in that American ranch at 300 Blackout, I run them in my ARs, my uh, Schmeisers. Love them. Great, great stocks. Great stocks, great magazines. Um, sights, you get, well, obviously you don't get sights with it. You, you get a rail, um, Picatinny rail, which is um, included, I believe. I believe it is included, although I could be wrong. Five round magazine, the mag is. Uh, threaded in 5.8s by 24. You do get that hefty muzzle brake, which does look badass. And it does sort of, you know, tame the recoil. Although, although in 6.5, it's not, you know, that bad at all. Um, but in 308, yee, I guess you kind of need it. Finish is matte black, weighing in 9.2 pounds. So it ain't the lightest, especially with that big scope on as well. One in eight right hand twist. Overall length, depending on how many spaces you've got in this stock, is between 41 and a quarter and 43 and a quarter inches. Barrel length is 20. Length of pull is between 13 and 15 inches. Uh, five grooves in your barrel. And that's just about, that's just about it. Can you tell I'm reading off uh, Ruger's uh, website? So you got a three lug bolt with a 70 degree throw. I like the bolt handle. It's it's the same as what's on the uh, the ranch. Really nice tang safety. Again, the baby brother here, the little ranch. It's the same sort of layout, but obviously different stock. The rest of it is pretty much the same. Um, 
On the stock, I've raved about the stock before on other videos where rifles have been dropped into this stock. Uh, I think it was a Remington that I did where it was in the Hunter stock. So I'm not going to go too too mad on the Hunter stock, but it is very cool. Um, you've got M-lock slots here. Spaces, you can just space his sling swivel. Um, yeah, thing. Yeah, there's sling swivel on, uh, sling, say sling swivel. You have this sling area right there. Okay, so that's on front. Sling swivel stud um, up front here as well. Soft recoil pad, which is very, very nice indeed. Do like that. Yeah, the stock's dead nice. Big magazine release here. So it's an ambidextrous mag magazine release. Really, really cool. The rifle, very accurate. I'll get onto accuracy in a little bit. It, very slick, the bolt is, like on the ranch. Just so, so nice to use. Uh, you know, for, for a, an inexpensive, I say inexpensive rifle, it's not like, um, oh God, I'm trying to do this like with three hands here. Ah, right, this is what I did notice. Now, I'm gonna tell you this why I haven't uh, remembered this is, I don't know. Um, yes, I come across a problem when I was sent this rifle. I had to take it, what did I have to do? I ended up, it was quicker to take the stock. No, I ended up having to undo, that was it. I attempted to take it out of stock and then I was like, oh, what are you doing, right? You just take the cheap piece off. So I ended up doing that to get the bolt in and out. That is probably, my only gripe about this setup, because you can't take the bolt out unless you mess about and take that cheek piece off. That is a bit of a faff, if I'm gonna be honest. And there's no quick way of sort of raising that up or anything. So that's a little bit of a faff. The bolt itself, uh, very solid, very smooth. Like I said, 70, 70 degree throw, so it gives ample scope clearance. Um, it's got like the full diameter bolt body as well with dual locking, dual cocking cams for smooth and easy cycling from the shoulder. So it's silky smooth, especially when it's lubed up. It's, it's just very, very slick indeed. Uh, you have the it's like a safety catch on the trigger. Um, you know me, guys. If you subscribe to the channel, you watch my crap that I put out. I'm not a big fan of those on triggers, if I'm honest. I don't know. I just ain't. I'd sooner have just a cross bolt safety and be done with it. Although you have got a tang safety, which is my favourite. Uh, but that's, I suppose it's just an added feature in it. But it kind of makes the trigger feel almost sort of two stage. Big heavy profile barrel, that monster, well, mediocre uh, muzzle brake on there. Let me show you the other side. Urgh. God, she's a weighty one. Very cool rifle though, very, very cool. Now, how did it go on the range? Pretty nice, pretty nice to be fair. It was accurate, it was accurate. And I used a variety of uh, ammo. Uh, let's start, well, let's show you the target first. Quite impressed. 100 yards testing MOA. This is how it did, okay? So first one was with a uh, cellular embellet, full metal jacket, boat tail, uh, 140 grain, they were, uh, these ones right here. So the cheapo stuff did pretty well, okay? I spent a bit of time zeroing it, you know, getting it on gongs and stuff. Uh, but then this is how I got on. With that ammo right there, okay? That was those two. That is a damn good group. I was well impressed with that. Then I went on to, I did use some of this on another target, but I think I shredded the other target. So I used some of this cellular embellished stuff. Again, 140 grain. Um, so that stuff, I think to be fair, 
is probably the same. Uh, I can't remember now. But anyway, it performed pretty much the same. Then I used Remington uh, Core Lock 140 grain. Uh, that's that's hunting ammo that performed pretty well as well that was that uh, that group there and i believe it was that group as well which really sort of impressed me to the max and then i used up some dregs so i got some dregs I think i got about 10 rounds left of this stuff it's selling and bell it blew the lead free stuff I zeroed again with this stuff because um, it's slightly lighter, 120 grain. So I re-zeroed with that uh, and then put it on a gong just to put, you know, sort of half a dozen rounds or so through. I had about, I think I had about 11 or 12 rounds of this stuff left in the box. Put it on a gong when I thought it was, you know, about there. I put it on paper. That's what I got with that. I did do... I think I did do another target with that stuff as well because I used this stuff on another target, but I don't know what I've done with that target. So overall, pretty damn good. You guys, I know for a while, are going to do way better than me. But that was off my um, Coldwell lead sled off the back of the truck. Pretty solid. Um, I had this target a bit, a bit close to uh, a gong. It's slightly, slightly shredded. So yeah, that's accuracy. Not bad at all with that selection of ammo. Um, so not bad at all. I mean, better, way better in your hands. Let's give the trigger a pull, see what she's doing. We are clear. Safety off, got the safety off, yeah. Let's give her a pull. Please. Oh, 4.4 ounces, sorry, four pounds, 4.1 ounces on that trigger pull. Let me remind myself of the trigger pull. It's a single stage. It's not bad, it's not bad. You know, for an out of the box rifle, not bad at all. So yeah, I'm a fan, I do like them. Um, I do like the Rugers. I do look, I ain't gonna lie, I do love the Blackout. I really do love that Ruger Ranch. Watch my video on that. I absolutely love that thing. But this for, you know, um, slightly bigger ca caliber, I say bigger caliber, longer range caliber. It's a nice setup in the Magpul Hunter stock. It really is. It just looks, it looks tactical, but not too tactical. Probably, I'd still probably say a bit heavy for a hunter. Although I've seen people have them for hunting. So, but no, a nice rifle. Anyway, guys, I am going to leave it at that. That is your review of the Ruger American Hunter or Magpul Hunter. A very cool option for, I guess, I'd say an all-round rifle. I'd say, or target or hunting. But very cool. But the Blackout is still my favourite. Thanks for watching, guys. That is Rack and Load. See ya.